Hey, welcome everyone. If you're a bass enthusiast like I am, you might have heard of Sony's extra bass headphone lineup. And that's where this comes in, a review of the Sony WH-XB910N wireless headphones. Now, if you want to see the written version of this review, you can find a link to my website in the video description. And for the rest of this video, we're going to call them just simply the 910 for short. It's just easier to say. So the main talking point, of course, is how it's a bass focused. And you can adjust that, of course, with an equalizer. But one thing that's overlooked is the amazing battery. It's like killer. It's, it's actually nuts, but we'll get into that shortly later on. For now, let's jump into the price. Here in Canada, it's priced at $349, whereas the, in the US, it's priced for $249. But it is quite common to find them on sale, so maybe look out for a sale if you're interested in these headphones. Now, this does support two different connection types. One is a wired headphone jack connection, and one is a wireless Bluetooth connection. The headphone jack connection is a 3.5 millimeter port, and the bonus thing about it is that if the battery dies, you can still continue using it with the wired headphone jack. Now when it comes to Bluetooth connectivity, it supports multi-connect, which basically means you can have two active Bluetooth connections at the same time. So for example, if it's connected to your cell phone and your computer, you listen to music on your computer and your cell phone rings, music will stop on your computer uh, and pause, and then you can quickly answer the call and start using them with the headphones, which is pretty cool. Now when it comes to how many devices you can keep in memory, uh, so, you know, we can just reconnect them without having to fiddle with repairing mode all over again. In my testing, I was able to get up to five, which is pretty adequate for most people. Uh, although Sony documentation does state you can store up to eight devices in memory. Now, Bluetooth technology is 5.2 um, and Sony advertises a range of about 33 feet, except I destroyed that by getting about 60 feet. So nearly double with two walls in between me and the device I was connected to and it still had a pretty solid connection. Accessories included in the box is a hard traveler's case which is expected at this price point. An auxiliary cable measuring at just under four feet which doesn't tangle easily thanks to in part to the material of the cable coating. Lastly there's a USB-A to USB-C cable measuring at nine inches. The charging method is to connect the cable to your own power adapter or directly into a computer since a charging adapter is not included in the box. Looking at the Sony website, there doesn't seem to be additional accessories available for sale, not even replacement ear cushions, so if you get them damaged, just be cautious, it might not be that easy to replace them. When it comes to appearance, the body is a simple looking design. They aren't the sleekest looking headphones, but instead carry a simple looking aesthetic. The body is primarily constructed of plastic and doesn't feel that tough. Despite weighing a hefty 252 grams, the body feels weaker than I would have liked it to. When I had my laptop bag completely stuffed with other electronic equipment, including along with the 910, not in the hard traveler's case, it was just fine, but it's just more of a concern if the headphones were to be dropped a few times. Part of the concern is due to the ear cuffs being able to collapse in for slightly better portability when traveling, but that makes the body weaker than a non-folding design. There's no information on Sony's website about them being water resistant. My suggestion is just don't get them wet at all, otherwise you risk damaging them. The headphones come in three color options, uh, black, gray, and blue. Now, when it comes to comfort, they're very comfortable. I've worn them for four hours straight on multiple different times, um, and I never get any discomfort, no sweaty ears, nothing like that. They feel great. And I think that's due to several things. The first is that the headband flex isn't that tight. It's pretty adequate, it's kind of loose. And not only that, of course, there's a pretty thick cushioning on the headband on the interior side, especially great for those people who have little to no hair. And of course, the ear cushions themselves are quite thick and are very soft. The headband can extend a decent amount and uses a notched design. The ear cups have decent accommodation for various head shapes as they can swivel up, down, forward, and back. Now, if you plan to just, you know, rest them on your neck when looking left and right, they just barely touch my chin. Of course, if your neck is shorter than mine, it might be a little bit annoying. Um, looking down is kind of a pain in the butt. Just wanted to mention it though. Um, if you try to fold the ear cups in, it does make it much easier to turn left and right, but depending on your neck thickness, um, they might kind of dig into your neck ever so slightly. So just be wary of that. When it comes to controls, on the left ear cup are physical buttons. The first is on the back to cycle through A and C mode, again, active noise cancelling, to turn it on, turn on ambient mode, which basically forces the microphones on the headphones to turn on and projects exterior sound into the headphones so you can hear everything around you easily, and simply turning everything off, which is basically headphone mode. So no A and C, no ambient mode, it's just regular good old headphone mode. Just below that button is the power button and holding it will activate Bluetooth pairing mode. On the right ear cup are various touch controls. The primary controls are swiping forward goes to the next track, swipe back to go to the previous track, swipe up for volume up, swipe down for volume down, tap in the middle to play pause or answer hang up a call. There's also a conversation mode. So basically if you hold your hand above the right ear cup, what basically happens is that the music still plays, but it lowers the volume substantially and it'll turn on all the microphones so you can hear your surroundings. So while you're holding your ear cup, you can hear your surroundings, have a conversation, whatever it may be, let go of your palm, 
And then of course your ANC mode or whatever you have will turn back on and music will go back to the regular volume that you had it at originally. While the touch controls sounds like a great feature, it's not, it's kind of finicky and a little buggy. Um, what'll happen is say, sometimes I wanna swipe forward for the next track, instead it'll just pause the music, which is kind of annoying, which is weird because when you look at the Sony WH-1000XM5, just XM5 for short, the touch controls in that are amazing. And I have reviewed those headphones, a link to that will be in the video description. Be sure to check it out because that is killer headphones. Um, but I have no problem with the touch commands on those headphones, but this one, I would say that, you know, sometimes in a given week, I'll have no problems at all. And then on a random day, three or four commands in a row will be buggy. If I had to average it out, I would say one in 20 commands will do something random. So I'll swipe down, but I'll pause the music instead. It's kind of annoying and kind of weird. Another command is to simply press and hold the center button, which will activate your smart assistant. In my testing, I've used Google Assistant. It works pretty well. Of course, it does also support Siri and Amazon. One thing missing is passive play pause. That feature, which is also found on much cheaper headphones, will automatically pause media when you take the headphones off and resume media when you put them back on your head. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, these do support ANC technology, but it's not that good. In fact, you're better off not using them at all. And let me explain. So when it comes to low humming sounds, like say, I don't know, you're in the kitchen reading something and the fridge turns on, yeah, it'll muffle out that sound. You won't really hear it that well. All the random noises, like say a TV in the next room, they get kind of muffled and suppressed ever so slightly. Not that great, but again, at this price point, you get okay performance. Where it performs terribly is high pitched noises. So for instance, when my kids are fighting over a toy and I try to break up the fight, of course I turn into the victim and they start yelling and screaming at me. The weird thing is that it's like the ANC technology wasn't trying to suppress them, it amplified the volume of their crying. Like, for example, if I were to just turn off ANC mode and just have regular headphone mode, when my kids cry or have a tantrum, it's suppressed slightly. Just because the ear cushioning is so thick, it'll back cancel a lot of background noise naturally. But with ANC mode on, that high-pitched noise comes in more louder. So wearing the headphones without ANC mode for high-pitched noises performs better, ironically. This isn't a one-off thing. I actually tested this in multiple scenarios, and every time they see them washing the dishes and the dishes clank ever so slightly, the noise will get amplified quickly. My suggestion, don't buy them for ANC technology. It works against you. Now, when it comes to ambient mode, which I mentioned earlier, allows you to hear your surrounding area very easily. Having a conversation with someone within five feet-ish distance sounds great. You don't even realize you're wearing headphones. They sound crystal clear. Obviously, anything beyond five feet sounds a little muffled because you're relying on microphones to kind of push the noise into your ears, but that's kind of expected. Overall, works pretty good. Okay, so let's talk about battery. This is the hidden gem of these headphones. And it's weird because almost no reviewer on the internet really covered these and tested these properly, but here we go. So when it comes to active noise canceling at max level or ambient mode, Sony advertises that in each mode, you'll average about 30 hours. In my testing, I got a whopping 43 hours, but that's not the great part. The great part here is when it comes to having regular headphone mode. So no ANC, no ambient mode, just simple headphone mode. Sony claims a battery of roughly 50 hours. In my testing, get this, I blew it out of the water with about 80 hours, just above 80 hours. And I thought this was a fluke. I thought in my time entries in my Excel sheet, I miscalculated, so I did it more than once. Yes, it took forever to get this review out because I had to drain the battery multiple times to get it right. Lo and behold, I was correct. More than 80 hours, just like 82-ish the second time. And I just could not believe it. So if you want strong battery life, these are the headphones probably to get. When it comes to recharging the battery, it takes about three and a half hours according to Sony documentation. And my testing, that's pretty accurate. Now you might think that's a bit of a bummer, but honestly, again, you're getting in return incredible battery life, which is like astonishing. Nothing really to complain about. One thing to keep in mind is that when the battery dies, which probably might never happen for you, is that you cannot use the headphones while they're charging. They will be forced to shut off. Although, uh, again, if the battery has died, I mentioned earlier, you can listen to them in a wired headphone jack mode. And just for the sake of testing, I plugged in the headphone jack and charged them at the same time. And yes, you can listen to music in that manner. The charging port is located on the bottom left ear cup and is a USB-C fitting. Now what I'm gonna do is jump into some microphone sample tests. Okay, so all the audio that you hear is from the 910 headphones in a quiet environment. And what I'm gonna do next is replicate a noisy environment give you a sample with my camera microphone to kind of let you know how noisy it really is and switch over to the 910 microphone to see if you can suppress a lot of the exterior noise and then we'll do a wind test last. Okay. 
Okay, so everything you hear is through the camera microphone right now, as you can tell, it's pretty noisy indeed. That's what you're going to the 10 headphones, and I'm just kind of blabbering on to see if it will suppress a lot of the exterior noise while I talk. But let me stop talking so you can see here if it still suppresses the noise. Okay, so lastly, I have the fan pointing at me from five feet away. Let's see if it'll pick up a lot of the uh, wind noise. Okay, so when it comes to audio quality, bass out of the box on a flat profile in the 910s is just punching hard in a good way. If you're a bass enthusiast like my, I am, you'll be like really pleased with the results. Again, I don't have to touch the equalizer, it's just great out of the box. And that performance carries over for songs that are meant for heavy bass, like rap and hip hop, for example, that I'll listen to, but even songs that you know might not be bass centric, so for example, pop or electronic music, the bass will still come through rather strong. If that's not your thing for certain songs, that's fine. You can adjust it in the equalizer in the mobile app, which I'll talk about shortly. Adjusting the bass down will flatten it, of course, and the song sounds more natural for those pop songs or you know, dance or house songs, if you will. There is one weird thing though. When it comes to increasing the mids or highs, one or the other or both, it makes hardly any difference. So if that's a concern for you, you might wanna look elsewhere. But if all you're concerned about is adjusting the bass, yeah, it works just fine. And when it comes to increasing the bass even higher than the flat profile, so you increase it with the notch and then the clear bass notch, which again, I'll talk about in the app shortly, bass can get explosive. Like it's like you're wearing car subwoofers on your ears. Some people might love it, some people might not, but again, you can just lower it if it's not your cup of tea. And of course that bass performance carries over pretty well when it comes to action movies and video games with explosions, car chases and all that good stuff. Supported codecs are SBC, AAC and, and LDAC, although it doesn't support aptX. However, you can use DSEE, which is Sony's technology, although honestly turning it on in the app, I don't really notice a difference. The audio quality sounds just the same. So despite it not supporting aptX, the quality is still pretty decent, but again, you're more focused on bass uh, performance here than mids and highs. Okay, so this is the app and there's a ton to cover, so I'm speaking extra fast, I apologize, but there's just a ton of features in here. So the first screen is a status screen and you'll see adaptive sound control, which basically kind of tries to gauge, are you walking or not? So if you're staying still, it might try to decide, hey, you don't need ANC technology. This doesn't work well. Sometimes I'm sitting completely still and ANC will fluctuate on and off for no apparent reason. I recommend not using this at all and just manually controlling yourself. There's information about which devices you're connected to and what's kind of playing. Going over to the sound bar, this is where the sound system settings is probably the most crucial. And at the top at sound, you have noise canceling and here's where you can actually adjust, well, what do you want? Do you want like noise canceling, wind noise reduction? And of course you can adjust if, how much you want to hear of the ambient sound around you. So basically how clearly do you want to hear your surroundings or not? There's an equalizer here with preset settings as you can kind of scroll through. Although if you go to manual, here's what I mentioned. You can have the equalizer and adjust the bass and mids and highs and the clear bass notch is at the bottom. It's an additional notch to increase the bass even further, which is pretty nuts, but might work for some people in their favor. And of course you can decide if you want to uh, prioritize sound quality over Bluetooth capability. And then here's your, you can turn off DSEE on or off at the bottom. Going over to the system, here's where you can choose if you want to connect to two devices at the same time. Voice assistant controls, if you want to uh, use one or not and which one you want to use. Touch control panel on the headphones, maybe you want to turn it off for whatever reason. You can do that if you want to. What will the ANC button do on the headphones? Will it allow you to control noise cancelling, ambient mode or regular headphone mode? And power off mode after a certain amount of time of inactivity. Look, again, I'm a bass enthusiast and I love my bass, but again, the shortcomings of the headphones are kind of bizarre. The touch controls, not horrible, but they're kind of finicky. And at this price point, it's a little inexcusable. The other thing is that if you can't adjust the mids and highs as well, you should be able to, again, at this price point, kind of unacceptable. You have all the pros and cons now listed down. It's up to you if you want to spend the money or not. Again, I recommend getting them on sale because they do go on sale often if you do want to pick them up. That's the end of this review. So if you found this video useful, be sure to check my social links and website link in the video description. Hit the like button, it does help, subscribe, and thanks for watching.